Thank you. Although, if ever anyone began in show business with the odds against him, it was Washloff Valentino, who we know as Liberace. From the start, the critics lambasted him, ridiculed his airy flamboyance as well as his piano technique. But Liberace knew something the critics didn't. He was one of the first performers to recognize the intimacy of television. He played not to millions of viewers, but to one person in one home somewhere in America. Just see where that perception has taken him. Oh, Liberace. Variety, the entertainment industry magazine, calls Liberace the number one draw in Las Vegas. His piano playing has made him a consistent moneymaker, and he has an estimated annual income of more than $2 million. By just playing the piano, not a chance. The Liberace show is an extravaganza. Folk dancers, disco roller skaters, musicians, rope twirlers, luxury cars, and a Mexican folk festival. And of course, Liberace himself. become an institution. The public expects the ultimate Liberace, the indulgence of the wildest dreams, and he gives it to them. Not bad for a kid from Wisconsin with the unlikely name of Washloff Valentino Liberace, whose ambition was to become a concert pianist. But Liberace, the only name he uses, soon discovered he had to play everything in his own special style. Well, uh, the best example I can give you is uh, perhaps the most famous classic in all the world for the piano is Chopsticks. And I believe I'm the only pianist to ever play chopsticks in Carnegie Hall. Everybody knows it like this. And Liberace plays it like this. It was the success television show in 1952 which convinced him that he was meant to be a keyboard entertainer, not a classical pianist. The candelabra became his trademark, and he began to experiment with costumes and special effects. The public loved him. Be a change in the weather and a change in the sea. From now on, there'll be a change used to run up and kiss the TV screens because they, they, they loved it. They, they, they felt intimate with him. He was in their living room. I'll and these women just go crazy over him. And it's all because he used to wink. But I'll be seeing you. The television fans flocked to his live performances in droves to the dismay of the music critics. Prodigious skill at faking, said one. The father divine of music, said another. But his popularity kept on growing, and finally, in the 60s, reviewers were writing things like a masterpiece of professionalism, polish, practice, timing, and image making. His fans have always known what they like. I like what he wears. It's, it's, he's just so pretty. The best thing is that he's Polish. He is the best entertainer I've ever seen in all my life. I like his clothes, I like his glamour. They call him Mr. Showmanship, and he's very much worth the title. Liberace performs constantly, at home and abroad. This 1971 tour in England was a sellout. Even the royal family came to the show a show which evolved out of those early television days. Well, my show it develops uh, little by little. Uh, 
I never totally change uh, a show completely. Uh, I add a number here, I add a number there. I, I sometimes uh, stumble across a gimmick that works with my audience. This gimmick of the revolving piano worked very well indeed. Today, that gimmick has a little more splash. This, of course, is the vintage Liberace everybody knows. Florid music and extravagant clothes. Off stage, Liberace lives exactly as you'd expect. His Las Vegas home is equipped with a sunken open marble bathroom and a baby blue satin bedroom. His retreat in Palm Springs is an old motel furnished in his own style. When performing, Liberace spends 32 weeks a year on the road. When traveling, he lives simply and quietly because of the rigorous schedule. Two shows a day, six days a week. Lee, as his friends call him, spends his afternoons going over the arrangements for next season's show. His favorite home is Las Vegas, run by Gladys Lucky, his housekeeper well, of 33 years. I like to think of the way he put it, that I've been like a second mother to him. He's like a child. He loves delicious food. And it seems to be the fattening foods, pies also, cakes. He has a reputation of being exceptionally generous towards the people he loves. Has he given you gifts? Oh, yes. He gave me a gorgeous mink coat, diamond ring, necklace, earrings to match. Liberace well, gave me this ring, which has my initial H on it, right? And I have all sorts of well, diamond and gold watches and chains and everything. I received a car from, from him, rather, at Christmas time. I came home from work that day, and I walked in, and he completely furnished my apartment. This ring that I'm wearing right here, he, when he was in South Africa, he brought back two uh, Cougarang coins. Between the two coins, there is an S that's spelled out here, done in diamonds. You know why it's the most expensive outfit? Actually, it's because of the buttons. They're real diamond buttons. Lee particularly yeah, loves nice. diamonds. Jokes about his jewelry are part of the act. Incidentally, he writes all his own material. And altogether, they spell out my name. See, that makes him tax deductible. <laughs> yeah. See, here's the L over here. Can you see it? There's the L. And here's the I. And here's the B. And the E. And the R. And the A. <laughs> it's in the back. <laughs> C-E, there it is. <laughs> Are you looking at the buttons? <laughs> Burt Reynolds would be so jealous. <laughs> I got the diamonds, he's got the jewels. <laughs> and I want all these nice people to know you better, too. Lee gives something more precious than diamonds to the young performers who are his protégés. Money, scholarships, publicity, and of course, the chance to perform. The current protégé is a young singer named Marco Valenti. I love kids, and uh, I think the regret is uh, probably that I didn't have uh, children. Uh, there was never a Mrs. Liberace, except for his late mother, for whom his devotion is well known. Because of that, because of his flamboyant lifestyle and male friends, there have been questions about his sexual preferences. Those rumors used to infuriate him. About 25 years ago, you lodged a libel action in England against a gossip columnist who insinuated that you are not the marrying type. We're living in such a permissive world that I don't think anybody really much cares what anybody does behind closed doors. It's not shocking anymore. It's, uh, uh, I think in the 50s, uh, any uh, publicity uh, along those lines was uh, very daring and, and uh, it called for a defense. For whatever reason, personal tastes, conservative times, hectic life on the road, there is no Liberace Jr. That's not to say, however, there's not a large family. 
This is Minuet. She's, she thinks she's a Doberman Pinscher. This is Baby Boy. Right. This is Scotty. He's only two months old. They're almost like children, aren't they? I call them my children. They're just marvelous. I love them. I have about 14 in Las Vegas, and I have six in Palm Springs. So that makes about 20. Liberace is an incurable collector. Nine homes, two dozen automobiles, and thousands of antiques. After filling the houses, he bought his own antique shop, but he couldn't bear to sell anything. The next logical step for a collector and a performer with an eye on history was to start his own museum. The museum is the very essence of Liberace. Admission provides income for his foundation, which handles the scholarships for promising talents. But more important, the museum is a record of Liberace over the years. It houses the flamboyant cars and the pianos, the collection of miniatures, as well as the real ones. The famous piano-shaped swimming pool was demolished years ago. Only a picture remains. Here are the costumes. So many, Lee has lost count. Incidentally, despite their 17th century look, they use modern Velcro fasteners for speedy changes. Well, now, what do you think? The costumes have gotten so elaborate, and the public's expectations are so high, that some outfits it's are barely different. wearable, like this full-length black mink cape. Completely lined with rhinestones, it weighs 136 pounds. Over the years, the critics have come to understand the secret of his continuing appeal. Uh, it has nothing to do with his piano playing, good or bad. That's not what the man is about. As a critic, you don't look to him for style or technique as you would to somebody else. He's about giving people a good time, entertaining them about the flamboyance. Uh, when you look at all those smiling faces in the Las Vegas audiences, you see that that's what they're getting, the good time that he sets out to give them. The Liberace show is a genuine good time, especially for Liberace. And although he likes the glitter as much as his fans, he likes it best when he can sit down and play. I'm doing what I want to do most and what I do best. I feel that when I'm on stage, I'm sort of the ringmaster, and I'm in charge of the proceedings, you know? And it, it, it's a marvelous feeling. At 62 years of age, you're just starting. I'm only 61. At 61 <laughs> years of age, you're only starting. Okay. Well, it's hard How long to are you going to go on? Well, as long as the public wants me to. And the public wants him, that's for certain. And to guarantee they want him, Liberace makes sure they always remember he is Mr. Showmanship. he tries to top himself, particularly his finale. This year's stunt will be hard to beat, but count on Liberace to do it once again. Ever seen anybody fly off the stage before? Yes, so laid back he is, so mellow. Thanks, Tom. <laughs>